Hello, Augies Worldwide. I'm Dave Kassler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, here with another episode of Ask Dave. We recently reviewed a box that had a lithium ion battery in it uh, that gave both 110 out, 12 volts out, 5 volts out for recharging your USB devices and could be recharged by a solar panel or a uh, 117 volt wall outlet uh, recharger. Well, that company uh, is not the only company that uh, makes these. And I heard from another company called Blue Eddy. Uh, they're a Chinese company and they make a very similar thing. So we're going to take a look at theirs the same way that we took a look at uh, the one for uh, the other company. And it came today in UPS. They did not send solar panels with it, but uh, you know, actually solar panels are pretty interchangeable. I may just use the ones that uh, came with it. Okay, this is a box in a box. It's a very sturdy box. This is a sturdy box too, and it says Blue Eddy on the front, <clears throat> and it shows on the back the face of the box, what we're going to get inside. It's laid out quite differently from the from the other one. Okay, now a very sturdy box. The Blue Eddy got a package here of an instructional materials. This is a box that's got a box in it. This is the charger. Wow, that's a big charger. And then we got a bunch of cables. This is a kind of cable with these attachments. These are for standard solar panels. Here is one to use <clears throat> where you can get um, charge it from your car. Plug that into the car, plug that into the charger panel. And this right here is the power cord. It's a standard. No, it's not a standard computer cord. It's a little different for that end right there. And then something to roll them all up with here. Okay, now the other one came equipped with a little cloth bag that would contain all of these things. So, that was nice. Let's see what we have once we pull off this styrofoam. And it is styrofoam, it is not cardboard, like some of the others. And then, here it is. Okay, let's see what we've got. On the back here is a large lamp area. On the front, we have a wireless charging output, $15, 15 watts. You can set your phone on top of this if it will accept wireless charging. Okay, on the front we have one, two, three, four power outlets. <coughs> These are 100 to 120 volt, 700 watts max. Okay, here is the input. You can go either, um, well, this is from 25 to 28 volts at 10 amps, or 12 to 28 at 8 amps, okay. Now this is a little different one from the other one. The, the uh, This will not accept the solar panel charging from the other one. So what you do, you have DC output, AC output, and a DC output. This DC output is um, two USB um, twos 
These are, I believe, USB 3s. We'll see, you push the button and it comes up on there and it tells you that this thing's 80% charged, okay? And you can use any of these. Here's a USB-C up to 100 watts. And over here, this is for the 110 volt outlets. And this is for <clears throat> DC outputs, including a cigarette lighter that's there. Note that these are outputs even though they look like inputs. Okay, now I don't see a way to turn that lamp on on the back. I think there's a button on the back. Is there a button on the back? One, two, three. We may have to turn the 12 volt on. It's on. Oh, it came on? Okay. That's your emergency flasher. And then just a light. So it gives one brightness of light. It's bright enough down here to read by if you're using this out at a, a campsite. There's a little bit brighter. And there's that flashing thing. All right. So there you have it. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to go measure the output voltage at 110. And we're going to look at the waveform. <clears throat> Okay, and how do you turn this off out here? All right. Let's look at, boy, that is a monster charger. Certificate of some kind of inspection. Safety instructions. User manual. Okay, so we can look at the pages here. <clears throat> Shows all the different parts that are on the front right there. Okay. And, um, shows, let's see, there's a little space under there that you can plug in if it's got a, a grounding cord. Okay, converter cable plug for solar panels, okay, and um, you can use up to 400 watts of input AC plus PV dual recharge supported, AC charge, solar recharge. This is the LCD screen guide right here. Shows what's in the box, the different part, and some extra options. And a few questions about cleaning and things like that. Um, some safety instructions on the back, like uh, don't stick your fingers in there and stuff like that. Um, it says, do not abstract fan openings. Should be over here. Looks like the fan is right there. And there's a fan over there too. Okay, so let's uh, take this thing in and, and check the outputs for it. Okay, uh, yeah. Okay, so we're going to do a little testing here. This is the lamp that replaced the leaning lamp. And um, I've got this plugged in here. Okay, so if you turn this off, that goes off. And turn that on, and that comes back on. Okay, now we, you'll have to get in close on this. 
This is the oscilloscope. We're looking at it's it's obviously a sine wave, okay? The frequency is 60.18 something hertz. So if you were to run an electric clock on this, the clock would run just a hair titch fast, okay? Uh, the voltage RMS is 112. So that's less than the 120 that you get when you are uh, running with utility power. It's usually about 120. Okay, 113 is perfectly acceptable for running most things. Now, I have here, uh, same as the last test we did, this is a screw shooter. Uh, by Milwaukee, and if we run this on 110, you can hear the pitch. Now, in a lot of these sine wave inverters, when you plug this into something like this, you don't hear the same pitch, it's lower. But that's, that's just as fast. So it's handling an inductive load pretty well. Now, we note on here that as I turn it on, we get a little perturbation in the waveform, which is to be expected for something like this. So um, we've got one more test we can do. We'll plug this into one of these 12-volt, uh, 10-amp outputs. It's 120 watts. This thing, by the way, will handle up to 700 watts. Okay. Now what we're going to do is take a look at the voltage that comes out of here. It says 10 volt, uh, 12 volts, is it really 12 volts? Okay, come on. It's 13.4, 13.4 volts, which will make uh, things like QRP radios and stuff very happy. Now, this is not exactly something you're going to take up on a hill because it's kind of heavy. Let's see, I'm going to turn that off. This only comes up for a little while. Interestingly, it doesn't show any power out for the LED lamp. Um, showing 123 watts out for that. It's got a nice charge uh, characteristic here, 20, 40, 60, 80. The fan on this thing is quieter than on the other one. The uh, screen goes out after just a few moments. So if you want to look at that again, push one of the on-off buttons and see what's going on. It doesn't even measure. Let's see what this thing is supposed to be. Four watts. This thing is four watts. And it's as bright as if you had a 60 watt bulb in there, although only 200 lumens come this way. You don't get light going this way either. Okay, so uh, what am I going to say in conclusion about this little power kit? It is different from the last one that we tested. Uh, you can charge this with solar panels. Um, the solar panels can go up to 28 volts. Now that does not mean that you can use a 24 volt panel with this thing because the 24 volt panel will go up to 36 wa uh, uh, volts, something like that. So that's a little too high for this. You're going to have to use a 12 volt panel, okay, and whose open circuit voltage is not greater than 28 volts. Um, the adapter is designed for 25 to 28 volts. So this monster adapter here that we have uh, puts out, uh, let's see, 
25.2 volts at 0.8 amp, which is not very much. So one has to wonder why this thing is so big. But it is. It's heavy, too. Uh, so whereas the extra cables uh, with the other one come in a nice little pouch that's got a zipper on it, these just come in the box. You can take along the ones that you need. Uh, this does have the phone charger on top. Uh, it does have a bigger light out the back. Um, the fan noise is quieter uh, than the others. Uh, it is putting light out to this without any kind of flicker. And if you look at the uh, oscilloscope, the uh, voltage is very constant at 113 on mine. Uh, RMS, which is about 10 volts lower than you might get it out of the wall socket, but it's still perfectly acceptable and will run any AC load, uh, including an inductive load, um, which is nice because not all solar power converters can run inductive loads like that. And the way to tell that, it may be a sine wave output, you plug a drill in and it'll, it'll go up. Now, I warn you, don't start the drill very slowly, but bring it in all the way, which you normally would do with a screw shooter anyway. Oh, we just now heard a little bit. A little bit louder fan. Okay, so the fan comes on based on the load and what needs to be cooled off. So it's, and there, it just went down again, okay? This is just a hair titch more compact than the other one. Um, it's got a lithium ion battery in it, lithium iron phosphate battery in it. So that's the kind of lithium ion battery that's designed not to burn, okay, like some of the earlier uh, rechargeable lithiums did, okay? So you've got all your cables, everything put together. Let's just see how expensive this is. Okay, so here is the EB55. Let's check this. Okay, it says 750 watts, 537 watt hours. In other words, it's got about a half a kilowatt hour in there. By the way, just as a uh, point of um, comparison, we have expensive electricity here because it's done by a co-op and not a large area served. Uh, we pay 15 cents a kilowatt hour. So this thing will store approximately seven and a half cents worth of electric power, okay? Because it's half a kilowatt hour. Um, but of course, it's all nicely portable and everything. Lithium iron phosphate battery uh, with uh, a solar generator, although I don't have the um, solar panel that did not ship with this. Okay, 100 watt USB-C, that's that right there. Okay, and um, emergency backup power for outdoor camping, home, van life, and so on. And the price is $450, which is comparable to the um, one that we tested uh, earlier. We've tested two of these, they both work, okay? They have slightly different features on it. Um, I don't know that I like one above the other, it just that it has uh, different features for the thing. It does work, we checked it out on the oscilloscope, it's got a nice clean waveform, and uh, you should be able to use this uh, wherever you want to. So, there you have it. If you would like to help support this channel financially, you may do so by going to decastlercom slash support and finding a way there that works for you. And until we next meet, 73.